Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, we're moving straight into a discussion on Kogi State, uh, where, of course, uh, we've been following uh, information from there and uh, their own COVID-19 updates. Uh, there has been talk about no positive COVID-19 in Kogi State. Uh, the, earlier, of course, there uh, was uh, uh, statements about COVID-19 being a hoax. And now we're going to be talking uh, this morning about um, the idea of mass testing going on in Kogi State and how far they've come, if it is true or not. The NCDC doesn't agree. Uh, Kogi State government has different opinions. We've invited the Commissioner for Information in Kogi State, Kingsley Fowl, to join us and uh, share his thoughts with us uh, from there. Good morning. Thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Good morning. All right, uh, your governor is in the news as saying there is widespread testing in uh, Kogi State and um, that no one has been infected. But there seems to be a contradiction here because the NCDC says that as of December 12th, data shows that there's only been 425 tests done, samples taken, out of a, million of, uh, a, a population of over 3 million. Could you give us some clarity, please? Uh, first, I, I would want uh, NCDC to tell us um, on, on a national scale uh, how many people they have tested in Nigeria uh, compared to the population of Nigeria. Uh, that is where we are to start the conversation from. Also, when you look at uh, the, the strategies being deployed by the NCDC, uh, you will see why uh, their their so-called um, uh, fight against the spread of COVID-19 is not yielding uh, so much results. Uh, NCDC cannot um, uh, determine uh, how we manage our health here. Uh, we've, done, we've done very well in Kogi State in terms of uh, health management. We did well uh, with laser fever. We did well uh, with COVID-19. We did well with a lot of other, uh, a lot of other uh, epidemics in the past. So we are managing our issues locally. I, I just needed, and, I, I, and I just why, needed clarification. And that's why we are having, and that's why we are, we are having the kind of results uh, so that we are having in the state. I'm, so uh, I'm actually I looking for clarification. I'm actually looking for clarification on the aspect of mass testing. If you're mass testing and you only have on record 425 people, is it that the state has its own record of this figure that is not made available? Because when, the, when you hear the word mass testing, automatically what comes to your mind is that a large number of people have been tested. So I'm if you are dis, you're not in conformity with the figures being given by the NCDC, what figures are you putting forward? NCDC is in Abuja, and they are giving the figure of 400 plus. We are in Kogi State, and our governor has said mass testing, and we know that we have tested uh, massively. Uh, is, is, there a, is there a State. figure that you so can share with us? We know that thousands of people have been tested in Kogi State. Can you, uh, it, is, Mr. it is the responsibility of... No, it is the responsibility of NCBC uh, to connect these two together. Yeah, but uh, Mr. Fawo, this is this is what we what this is we what we hope that we can be able to reconcile with what they have. Yeah, apologies. Th this is what we hope that we can um, get out of you this morning. If, if there is mass testing, we can't argue. Uh, but uh, is there a possibility that you can give us an estimate? Um, you've just mentioned thousands. Kogi State has a three million plus population. Mass testing, you know, I would, I, I, you know, assume, you know, would maybe be 500,000, 200,000, 300,000 people tested so far. So can you give us an estimate of the, you know, people that have been tested so far in Kogi State before my next question? Yeah, I'm very happy with the word estimate that uh, you used uh, because we uh, test, tests uh, are carried out uh, virtually on a daily basis. So we may not be able to give uh, accurately uh, that this is the number. But I, I, I'm very sure we are close to the 200,000 mark. Uh, and when you have that uh, compared to the population of the country, compared to the availability of kids, then we've done very well. Uh, where, um, I don't, I'm not sure if you know, but you know, availability of kids for Kogi State, how are you making that possible? We have enough kids in the state. Uh, we have enough kids. We've made our own arrangements. We are not depending on NCDC in managing this um, issue because uh, we, we, we've sensed a lot of foul play from the beginning. And the healthcare of our people 
uh, is, is our priority as an administration. So the governor is doing a lot. Uh, to ensure that the healthcare of the people are well taken care of. So no, we're not depending there on seem them. To be we are finding a local solution to the issue. Again, there seems to be a contradiction here because the governor in the interview is um, quoted as saying, um, having uh, concerns about the procurement of vaccine. He's saying that we shouldn't spend that money to procure vaccine. Um, the governor, one would, the, one would the, the, think the that if the governor is saying you, you don't need vaccine, it validates position that you don't think that there is indeed COVID-19 and the, the claims no, 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 of no, no, testing no, 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 no. is not valid. The, the, governor, the governor had never said there is no COVID-19. What the governor kept saying is that the management of COVID-19, the hype around it, the promotion of COVID-19 is unfortunate. And what he was talking about the vaccine is that we are in, we are in a recession as we speak. We are trying to rebound the economy out of that very terrible recession. So for you to now deploy billions to combat uh, COVID-19 that had killed less people than most of the ailments that we are not attending to is unfair, is unfortunate, and is a waste of resources. That is our position on that. And we know that the issue of uh, procurement of vaccine is being pushed by uh, the promoters of, NC, uh, of uh, COVID-19 now, especially NCDC, by creating a panic situation around the country again. How many people died in 2018 in Nigeria? How many people died in 2019 in Nigeria? How many people died in 2020 in Nigeria? Less people died in 2020 in Nigeria than in 2019, the so-called year of the pandemic. So we, we are saying that COVID-19 is not that kind of, a, 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 that kind of a, an ailment that you, you, you deploy all the resources of the nation to, that you close down the economy of the nation and push us into hunger and recession. The, that is what we are saying about right. it. Yeah, just so to we clarify, are not saying there is no uh, coronavirus. Just to clarify, um, COVID-19 became you know, fully blown in 2020, not 2019. Um, um, of course, it was discovered later, 2019, in uh, China. But I, I, I want to, uh, you know, ask a question. You know, the claim that there is no positive case of COVID-19 in Kogi State. Uh, Kogi State, of course, uh, is um, neighboring to Benue, to Enugu, Edo, and of course the FCT, um, which have in all these states seen a lot of numbers of uh, positive cases. Uh, found is there a travel ban between Kogi State and any of these states, and how has the Kogi State government been able to ensure that no positive case from the neighboring states has come into Kogi State? Uh, thank you very much. What we are doing in Kogi State, what the governor is doing in Kogi State, is dealing with the people very, very honestly. Authorities in Nigeria, authorities that are charged with the responsibility of managing our healthcare in Nigeria are not sincere with Nigerians. Uh, there, was, um, there was an epidemic uh, 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 a couple of months ago in Enugu State that killed so many people. Uh, they tried to pin it on Kogi State until we were able to prove it that it was just our neighboring community in Enugu State that had that. Uh, the fact that we are managing our healthcare uh, system uh, uh, properly and we are sensitizing our people, uh, the Ministry of Information and Communication and the Ministry of Health uh, are doing a lot in sensitizing the people of Kogi State uh, about this epidemic. What we not do with the people is that we will never trade with their health care. We will never declare figures that do not exist. All those so, figures that they are declaring are fake uh, and false. So, you're, so what you're saying is that the together. number of positive cases that have been declared by the NCDC from Abuja and from Edo and from Bainway and, and the likes are fake? Very fake. And we can prove that. And at a point, if they continue to push this country uh, into the kind of um, the, their business that they are doing, we will have no choice than to drag them to the court uh, to seek redress. And for us to set this uh, thing, uh, uh, to, 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 to lay it down once and for all and set to it. I, I think we, we don't have to be this insincere with our people. COVID-19 is not a threat to us. We should stop we should stop raising panic. We should stop placing our finger on the panic button so as to create the chance for so many people to make, for some very few people to make billions of naira while pushing the country into recession, hunger, and lack.
Okay, they and since you're, since you're taking this conversation in that direction, let me ask you what the security situation is in the state and what level has the government gone to ensure at least a minimum compliance with some of the basic standards to protect, uh, of basic hygiene to reduce the prevention of COVID-19. Do you have these protocols in place, maybe for places like the government house, public hospitals, and other places where there is possible crowd? Let me tell you this, uh, let me tell you this. Uh, before even COVID-19 came into being, uh, we've, been, we've been advocating, we've been putting in place systems uh, to ensure public health uh, is, is uh, put on the front burners. So we, we did not wait for COVID-19 uh, to break out uh, before we started doing that. Uh, our health system in the, in the state is one of the best in the country, and that was attested to by the former Minister of Health when he came to the state. Uh, the Belo Care and all that, and we're about the, one of the very first few states to start a health insurance scheme uh, now uh, that we have kick-started. Uh, even government officials are, are paying more than they should pay so that it will be able to spread to the indigents in the rural communities. That is what we are doing in the state. It, it doesn't have to be about COVID-19 before you promote uh, public health. On security, every Nigerian knows uh, that the major problem of the nation is what Ogi has found a solution uh, to, which is the problem, uh, which is the issue of security. You might have uh, one flash here and there, but with the way we deal with the situation is what separates us from others. Uh, we've been able to, uh, to a very large extent, ensure security uh, in the country, in, in our states, uh, so to say. And the way we have been able to do this is to involve the locals. Our local hunters are involved. The Fulani Hats men in our rural communities are involved in those decisions. So it is, it is uh, rare to, to hear that the Fulanis are raiding communities uh, in Kogi State. We are doing a lot to uh, be able to sort out the, the few flashes that we have. But to a very large extent, the governor has proven that what is the problem of Nigeria, he has been able to solve it in Kogi State. What, what would you say... Uh, might be the reason and, and I would first of all ask do you know anyone personally who may have uh, been infected with uh, COVID-19 in the period um, in the 2020 year no I, I didn't know anyone okay um, I, I did not meet anyone who had COVID-19 maybe not in Kogi state but um, do you do you agree or do you think that maybe you know some of the numbers also of the dead uh, are also false very false because people have been dying before COVID-19 and they will continue to die even after COVID-19. What about so these prominent the figures that we... Is, uh, is unfair, it's illogical. But what, what about... That, so, uh, sorry I, I to think, interrupt. Uh, uh, sorry, excuse me, please. Excuse me, please. I, I think the media has a big role to play here uh, to be able to sensitize our people. What should, we, should we, what we should be talking about now is the danger of hunger that is tearing us in the face. So we should devote our energy to rebounding our economy, hunger, hunger, man, growing Mr. more food, Mr. Fowl, ensuring food hunger security, has been... and not promoting this pandemic uh, that is uh, that is the cost. Hunger, but let me let me. Hunger has been with us for a long time. Even with all the fantastic strategies that put that governments across the state seem to be putting in place, we still have people that live in abject poverty. I believe we have scenarios like that in Kogi State. But we're talking about a situation that is seen as a pandemic. I, I want to go back to your comments about the deaths also being fake. We have prominent names. Wouldn't their families and government have come up to say died of this? Uh, one of the most prominent names that can come to my mind readily is Kiari, the president's uh, chief of staff. Kiari is said to have died from COVID-19 complications. We also know other big names. The army that is in charge of security in this country has come up to say some of the officers, one of them, after a conference recently, died of COVID-19. Are you saying that all of these figures are wrong? That this is let, me, let me start by let me start by saying this. President Muhammad Buhari is one of the best to have happened to this uh, country. They know that he's a man of integrity, uh, a man of character, a man who came with the Buhari nomics of ensuring that we diversify our economy and uh, put more into agriculture. Uh, because they know they, they, they know the trend the man was going, they needed to bring high profile names into the death. To be able to convince, to be able to convince the man and drive fear into the man. 
So no, you're not answering the question. So are you saying? Are you saying? Are you saying that? Are you saying? Can you hold on? Okay, let him finish. If you if you investigate, if you do a lot of investigative journalism, you will discover that Abba Kiari had some other ailments before COVID nineteen. So if he had that and those things were not managed in the country before you had to you had to fly them abroad to manage them and you now lock down everywhere and nobody could go out and now he could not go out to manage those issues and he died and you are saying it's covid 19. are you um NCDC if I will. will soon be dragged ncdc will soon be dragged to the law court King if I will, are you are you then saying are you then saying that the uh, president muhammad Buhari doesn't have the true picture of what is going on in, in Nigeria today with regards health. Are you saying that he is being lied to? Are you saying that he has a team around him that is not being honest with him and he is not aware of the true picture of Nigeria's health uh, situation? They are telling him what they want him to believe. Yeah, well, yeah I get that. You know, what own, I'm asking is... In their own interest. I, I, I get I get that. That's what you've said. What I'm asking is, yeah. are you then saying that President Muhammad Buhari, um, as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, doesn't know the true story of Nigeria's health um, um, situation? If they are and, telling and, and him that, what they and want to believe, be... and what they are telling him is not true, yeah. then uh, I think uh, my, uh, your guess is as good as mine. I'm not guessing, I'm just I'm asking. So would you say the same thing, you know, is very likely with regards to security? He may not also know what's really going on with regards to security in Nigeria today. He's an expert in that line. He's not an expert in healthcare management. If but is, he's a general and he understands what security is all about. He's okay. an expert in that line. But if, if it is possible that he has, you know, because he's not also on ground all the time. He, he's not in Borno, he's not in Katsina all the time. He's in, he's in Asorok as the president. So it's, is it, is, is, if it is possible that he can get false information from the people that he appointed um, to manage his health, rem, uh, ma the health situation in the country, including boss Mustafa, um, do you then think that it's also possible that some of the people who are giving him information with regard to security are lying to him? Let me, let me tell you this. It depends on how you process the security, uh, sorry, the information you receive. If you, if you receive the information, if you look at the information around COVID, they said it's airborne. They said you cannot touch your face. You cannot touch your nose. It is uh, transmitted through the air, through the everything. They are confusing the situation. And the president is not a health care management expert. You cannot compare that to the issue of security. Uh, he rose to become a general in the Nigerian army, so he understands the security terrain very well. So right. it, is, it is not Just in the same line. Go. It this is not in the same line. So the information you give him in security, he has the expertise. He has the knowledge to process this those is, information. This is, this is what, have that. This is what I want you to mind. say. This is what I want you to say before you go. President Muhammad Bari doesn't know the true situation of Nigeria's health um, situation. Uh, yes, I, get... I agree with that. No, I want you to say it. Because he's been misled. Are you... <laughs> I want to say thank you very much. Uh, we're out of time. Um, we appreciate your candor, even though, um, uh, I mean, a lot of persons will disagree with your position, but it is yours to make, and you represent the government of uh, Kogi State. State. We thank you very much for joining us uh, on The Breakfast, and we hope to speak with you again soon. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good day. Okay. Interesting conversation there. Um, it's, uh, I mean, there isn't more to add to the conversation we've just had, and we're actually out of time. So we'll just say uh, thank you very much for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. It's been a full package, I must say, and we hope you can join us for the 1st of January 2021 when we have conversations here again and serve you a full plate of breakfast. Really great way to end the year. Um, speaking with the Commission for Information in Kogi State, great way, you know, a little controversial way to end 2020 and the last edition of the breakfast. Um, so we hope you enjoyed it. If you missed it, you, and of course, I, like I always say, if you join us late, you can catch up on social media.
at PLOS TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our YouTube channel, all with the same name, at PLOS TV Africa. I am Osaogi Ogbawa. I wish you a um, great 2021 ahead uh, when we see you tomorrow. And um, Felicity Ezewike, please, whatever you do tonight, be safe. Remember, there are those who love and worry about you at home. So when you go out, be safe, get back home on time, Maybe do your crossover with your family. I'll see you in a bit on the news.